What's up guys, the snowman here. Been looking forward to this video for a very long time. It's my comprehensive 2022 FIFA World Cup predictions. I've already done eight group previews for all the groups. Uh, please check those out if you want, but this is gonna be more of an overarching look at the World Cup. I'll go through all the groups and predict which teams make it through to the knockout stage. And then I'll fill out my knockout bracket and share with you guys who I have lifting the World Cup trophy on December 18th. Let's kick it off with Group A. This is the one group where I'm going against the grain and not picking the favorites to win. Senegal is my pick to finish in first. The 2021 African Cup of Nations champs, a very strong defensive DNA with players like Koulibaly, Gay, and Kuyate. So much of Senegal's success will depend on the health of their talisman, Sadio Mane. Hopefully he can recover quickly from his leg injury. Amane uh, second in the Ballon d'Or voting this year. The creative force behind the Senegalese attack. Then I have the Dutch in second. Too much talent not to advance. Van Dijk in the back. Frankie de Jong, the star in midfield. And Memphis Depay, the target man up front. I like Ecuador to make some noise with their pace on quick counterattacks. But just two wins in nine matches in 2022. I've got them and Qatar failing to advance out of the group. Qatar will have the home field advantage, but they're the first host nation to be making their World Cup debut since the very first World Cup in 1930. Not enough firepower for the home team. Group B is going to be super tight. I just barely have England edging out the US and Wales for the top spot. England coming off the impressive run to reach the Euro final last summer. Manager Gareth Southgate has a lot of fun pieces to tinker with up front. Kane, Sterling, Foden, Grealish, and more. I'm not too worried about them in the group stage. USA Wales is a complete toss-up to me. I chose the United States because of their depth, specifically in midfield and attack. The U.S. may have the second youngest World Cup squad, but it, it comes jam-packed with players playing in Europe's top five leagues. They want to build up for when they host the World Cup in 26. Uh, Wales is at their first World Cup in 64 years. That's the longest gap in World Cup history. Gareth Bale continues to be Superman for them. Two goals in the playoff versus Austria, but I have the Welsh and Iran. Iran falling short. Iran's super compact defensively, but they'll be under constant siege in this group. Next up, super fun Group C. Another group extremely difficult to pick the top two. I do feel safe in saying Argentina finishes in first. The 2021 Copa America champions are currently on a 35-match unbeaten streak. That's the second longest of all time behind Italy from the last few years. Lionel Messi looking to add the final touch to his trophy cabinet with a World Cup title. And Argentina with a great support cast around him this year on uh, second place I've got Poland just a hair better than Mexico superstar striker Robert Lewandowski should undoubtedly score his first career goal at the World Cup this month they looked great in the playoff versus Sweden Mexico I'm not entirely sold on it was a sluggish CONCACAF campaign from them 0-2-2 in the four matches versus the U.S. and Canada. The Mexicans have decent build-up play, but lacking in the finishing department. And then I have Saudi Arabia in the basement of Group C. The next group has the reigning world champions in it, France. The favorites in Group D, despite the key injuries to N'Golo Kante and Paul Pogba, I like France to win their group. Yes, their six midfielders only have a combined 60 caps to their names, but the attacking riches will make up for that lack of experience in midfield. The Ballon d'Or winner, Karim. Benzema leads an exciting front line alongside Mbappe, Griezmann, Dembele, Komen. The list goes on and on. Uh, Denmark is very well balanced. Semi-finals at the Euros last year. Christian Eriksen back and playing great football. They'll be a really tough out. Australia in third. I like their physicality and counterattack play, but there is a talent disparity between them and these Europeans. I'm not overly optimistic about Tunisia's chances of advancing as well. They've got an aging front line. We're a bit fortunate in African qualifying to play Mali in the third round. I see the Eagles of Carthage finishing in fourth. Transitioning to Group E, everyone is penciling in Germany and Spain as the two teams to advance, but we know what happened to the Germans in 2018 in Russia. Nonetheless, I think Coach Hansi Flick brings some much-needed fresh energy to Germany, and I like them to reign supreme in Group E. Joshua Kimmich will be the maestro of a midfield that loves to possess the ball and slowly build up from the back. I am concerned a bit by the lack of mobility from Germany's center backs. They could be susceptible to a counterattack, and Spain has the personnel to make them pay. The Spanish, my second team here to advance to the knockout stage. No David De Gea or Sergio Ramos, but they play a similar aggressive possession and counterpressing style as Germany. Keep an eye on the 19-year-old Finan Pedri in midfield. 
field. Japan's going to be patient, but I don't think they have the forwards to make these two former champs pay. And then Costa Rica, the final of the 32 teams to qualify for the World Cup. Goalkeeper Kaylor Naves will have to make a lot of saves for his country to have a shot. Group F is wide open. This might be the only group where I can legitimately see all four teams making it through to the knockout stage. Belgium has lower expectations than four years ago when they finished in third place, but Kevin De Bruyne is in sizzling form for Man City. Romelu Lukaku is healthy enough to be in their 26-man squad. I've got Belgium in first, but I worry about their elderly back line, Vertonghen and Alderweireld, especially against such a quick team like Canada. They're back in the World Cup for the first time since 1986. The Canadians finished on top in CONCACAF qualifying. So much pace on the flanks with Buchanan and Davies. Uh, Kyle Lahren and Jonathan David, the finishing men up top. Canada gets out of the group for me. Croatia in third, despite Luka Modric still playing at a world-class level in midfield. Uh, Kovacic and Brozovic join him to form a truly elite triangle in the center of the pitch. And even Morocco, who I have in fourth, has a real puncher's chance to make it out of this group. Uh, you guys have left plenty of comments about Morocco being underrated on my Group F preview. As for Group G, plenty of quality on display here. Brazil was nearly flawless in South American qualifying as they went unbeaten in 17 matches. They're they're stacked at all four levels. Brazil, kind of known in the past few World Cups for being all flash, but no substance in the big moments. Well, uh, this squad has a lot of toughness, a lot of bite with guys like Casemiro and Marquinhos. Neymar could pass Pele as Brazil's all-time leading scorer with three goals in Qatar. Serbia and Switzerland is so tough to call who finishes in second place, but I like Serbia just a little bit more because of the attacking options. They play exciting, free-flowing football. Switzerland always so consistent, at least around a 16 at their last four major tournaments. Granit Xhaka in tremendous form, but I have the Swiss in third. And then just a really tough draw for Cameroon. They're not in great form. Recent losses to Uzbekistan and South Korea lead me to believe that they'll finish bottom in Group G. Last group to discuss, a very fun one with rematches galore. Uruguay and Ghana with that memorable quarterfinal in South Africa in 2010. Also, Portugal and Uruguay met in the round of 16 four years ago. And those are the two teams teams I have advancing in Group H. Portugal should come out with a strong sense of urgency, wanting to win this group and avoid Brazil potentially in the round of 16. I love Ruben Diaz and the elite back line of Portugal. Uh, there has been some controversy lately with Ronaldo. He's not in his finest form, but Cristiano aiming to be the first player ever to score in five different World Cups. I like Uruguay's chances too. They're kind of at the end of a golden generation with guys like Suarez, Cavani, Godin, and Muslera. Uh, maybe the 24-year-old Federico Valverde that does the heavy lifting for them. Ghana in third place. They'll be young, energetic, and fearless. The last African team to make the quarters of the World Cup back in 2010. And South Korea in fourth. So much depends on the health of star striker Sun Hyung Min. Uh, regardless, they'll be very difficult to break down. So that's how I see all eight groups shaking out. This is my knockout bracket starting out in the top left. Just like in 2010, I have the U.S. bowing out in the round of 16 to African opposition. Senegal to get back into the quarterfinals. Argentina, 2-0 winners over Denmark. They've got the second best odds to win the whole thing after Brazil. And those odds have gotten better and better in their favor the last couple of weeks. Germany over Canada, not enough experience for the Canadians as they uh, experience some growing pains in the city of al -Wakra. Uh Brazil versus Uruguay, that's been a World Cup final in 1950, a Copa America final on four separate occasions. I've got Brazil escaping in extra time. On the right half of the draw, Group A runners up Netherlands will upset the Group B winners England. There's a lot of buzz about 19-year-old Javi Simons. I think he becomes a household name after this match. France will take care of business against Poland as they try to become the first repeat champions since 1962. I've got Belgium winning a dramatic match over Spain 2-2 after extra time and a penalty shootout. You might remember Spain lost to Russia four years ago in penalties, one of four shootouts from 2018. And Portugal gets their revenge against Serbia 2-1. Uh, Serbia won their qualifying group for this World Cup, pushing Portugal to the playoff. But I believe Ronaldo and crew come through there. In the quarterfinals, Argentina and Brazil both do their part to set up a dream semifinal as the magic for Senegal finally runs out. And Brazil exercises a few demons from their epic collapse in 2014 in Belo Horizonte against the Germans. I also have the Netherlands outlasting France in the first ever World Cup meeting 
between those two European foes and give me Portugal to win an instant classic over Belgium. Three to two fireworks in that contest. Then in the semifinals, it's Brazil winning the match of the tournament over Argentina in Lucille. Vinicius Jr. to net the game winner in extra time to elevate Brazil past their longtime rivals. Uh, such a shame that Brazil and Argentina wouldn't be able to meet in the final if they both win their groups. I definitely see them as the two strongest sides in this field. In the other semi, I've got Portugal over the Dutch 1-0. Again, I love the defensive depth for Portugal. Uh, even if they sustain an injury or two, Diaz, Danilo, Pepe in the middle, and some great fullbacks too with the likes of Cancelo, Dalo, Guerrero, and Nuno Mendes. They should be really solid in the back, solid enough to stifle the Netherlands, which brings me to my final, Brazil versus Portugal. Of course, it was Portugal that originally colonized Brazil back in the year 1500, so these nations go way back. Uh, in the end, I think Brazil is the victor in this star-studded matchup. 3-0 as they claim their record sixth World Cup title. Neymar finally delivering on the biggest stage for his nation. Uh, this is the best Brazilian team that I've seen in at least the last 12 years. Years. They're ranked number one in the world for a reason. No major flaws in their roster from top to bottom. No glaring weaknesses. Give me Brazil as the 2022 FIFA World Cup champions. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed my World Cup predictions video. Please leave a comment. Let me know who you think is going to win it all. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, though. If you want more soccer and football content, please uh, subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. I'll be back very soon. Definitely going to do a World Cup recap video, so be on the lookout for that and uh, much, much more to come. Cheers.